Welcome back to painting and decorating. Finally, we're coming close to putting the wallpaper on. Now, this is a super fresco uh, paintable textured paper to uh, hide all this mess on the walls. Now, the last video we did all the filling. Um, the filling's dry now, so we're ready for the next stage, which is a light sand over everything. And I'm just using some P80 and a dust mask. And all I've got to do is a light sand over the edge of the coving, because I've already sanded the majority of things. So a light sand under the coving, and a light sand over the walls, mainly where the filler is. <clears throat> and then moving down onto the skirting boards, and the light sand of the skirting boards um, and then it's a coat of diluted PVA and then you white ball it down with a cloth and you can smooth any edges off with the cloth as you're going um, so I'm not going to bore you with that part I'm going to start with the paper so you can see it once it's done Right, that's the uh, PVA done now, dried. Now, this is some of the gear you need. Just the blade, some scissors, tape measures, pencil, plumb line. You can use a spirit level if you want. You can also use a laser line, uh, paper hanging brush, and I've got my pasting brush, bucket of water with a cloth for wiping off the paste, um, paper and table, some overlap adhesive, uh, and this is the paper. Super fresco, paintable. Now, the good thing about this paper is that texture. Um, because basically, with that, it doesn't matter where I start because I'm not really following a pattern. There's no pattern to it. So, the radiators are getting fitted in the next couple of days. So I'm going to do the um, radiator walls first, that's the one I'm going to do first. I'm going to remove the brackets and just leave the screws in the holes. So I want a paper, just pop it through and uh, you sort it. I sometimes mark, depending on these, I put a line across the metal where the screws are. And always make sure you get them back on the right side. Electrics being turned off. Um, right. So generally, as a rule, we try to work away from the natural light with wallpaper. So I'm going to start in this corner. And I'm going to plumb a line. See this conduit. I'm actually going to paper around that. Because it's an eyesore. Um, copper pipes they last for years so it's never going to come off if it does it can always be repapered not a problem so when I put my first length on I'm going to make sure I come round this corner here uh, by eighth of an inch so then I can overlap the next piece and come back round to there and overlap onto this wall and then put the next piece across, blocking that gap. There's no need to fill that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to measure the paper, plumb a line down. Although I've sanded everything down, I always just give it a run over with a piece of sandpaper, just to feel if there's any nibs. There's nothing worse than when you've done some paper and you feel see lumps under it. Make sure you check 
pattern number and the batch number on all of them. Can you see how that is shrink wrapped there? So there's a bit of heat process gone into it. And what that does, <coughs> it damages the edge of the paper. So you get it where it's pretty straight and neat. Then it can go flat towards the ends. That sounds pretty bad. And what I usually do is I cut it off, probably about there, where the damage stops. You can see where the pattern's flat there. So I've cut it there. Because usually you end up not using the end, so you might as well waste the beginning. I've measured my wall and I want an inch and a half top and bottom for cutting off for trimming. So I've started off my paper there on the edge and then come down. That's a six foot mark, that's six inches. So take it to the fold it back seven foot and I want seven foot five inches. So that's me where I'm gonna cut the paper just there. I've just pulled my line down and uh, basically what I usually do is I look for the deepest part where the wall goes in and that's where I'll measure out from and then I'll pull my line off that. So I've already done that and then you can work out how many lengths you need for that wall by going off your plumb line, my axe, so that's one, two, three, and four. So, a little piece left at the end there, which I'm going to splice at the top. The returning on this wall here, again, because there's no pattern, and start it where I want. So there's a return to the wind to the uh, patio door here. So I'm going to actually see if I work it from there coming back this way. Where that lies. So that's pretty good there. So I'm going to pull the line off that wall for that wall. And then I've got a length to the my length around there. I've actually managed to get four lengths out of the door because it's uh, a free match. There is no match to this paper. Now, what I usually do is I mark the tops straight across like that. So I always know where the top is. And then what you want to do is roll the paper back on itself. Taking the 
are you ready to pace that? Well, I won't bore you with the pacing part. But generally, you don't want to be getting paced on the front of your paper. Also, it's got a five minute soaking time, this paper. So sometimes you can paste maybe two, maybe three lengths in five minutes. Um, and then you just put them up one after the other. I always time the paper that's ready to go up now. So, right. Now, when you fold your paper, top is usually a longer fold than your bottom as well. So you know where your top is straight away. Opening your paper up with a top fold allows it to drop onto your foot. And then slightly fold it, find it where your plumb line is, and put that side on, and making sure you've got your inch knife at the top. And then just let it follow the plumb line down, pushing it into place. And then using your paper handling brush, push the air from that one back. Pushing it into all the corners with your fingers. Be careful not to drag it too much because you can rip it very easily. Now, because I'm actually going to emulsion this, I can actually use the pencil to make a mark around the edge where to cut and leaving a, a bit of overhang on that edge there to go around the pipe box. And then cutting it with the scissors can follow the pencil line, which makes it a lot quicker and very neat. Be careful your off cuts, always fold them up, don't leave the paste exposed. You can use a knife to do your trimming, but sometimes it can rip the paper. This is very thin, this paper, once it's wet. So that's why I'm going to use my scissors for most of this. You can wipe the paste off around the edge. And then just make sure there's no bubbles. That's good. And then you can move down and cut around the bottom. I'll show you doing around that socket. So release your fold. Making sure it's on your plumb line. And then usually what I do is where the socket is, you can feel for the corners. And you can push with your fingers and you can see where the corners are. You can also put a line on using your pencil just to the edge of the corner of the, the socket.
and then what you use with desk here is cutting over that mark just by a little bit and that's what bends round the top of the socket Taking your time, let your paper around the socket. Don't be rough with it. I've actually got a conjure coming up, so that needs cutting around. So I'm going to mark that now. Right. So every way you want the paper to finish before you do any marking. Making sure there's no bubbles behind. Then you can mark with your pencil across the top of the skirt and you know, that paint there. Now when it comes to the socket, you don't want to cut it too close because you want a little bit to tuck around the back of the socket. So I always put my finger just in the uh, between the space, make a space, and just go around. Trimming the paper then. Be careful when you pull it back off because it can rip so easily. That's the thing. Once your paper's wet, it can be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. on this side here. Which I'll leave to there. So once you've done that, you can just push your paper back into place. Making sure when you've finished you wipe off the paste on everything. Cutting off the right side of your paper. 
um, sort of double checks that this is the top and this is the piece I want coming off. Taking the tape as you can find four and a half inches, put your finger against the half the four and a half. Against the side of your bench, I'm using your pencil. You can make a mark down this because again it's the emotion. Keeping your scissors on the bench. Yep. Now, making sure you leave your overhand round the corner. And we've got a bit to trim off at the top. You've got to try and make sure you have the same length all the way around, which that ensures the paper is going to be more plump as well. You can always double check the pattern if you want with a plump line. That doesn't look too bad at all. That. Now, I'll actually give myself plenty to trim off either side because I hate messing about with little pieces of paper. Now, once you're satisfied, then you've got it using your pencil. Again, you can mark up one side. Which on this side you've got to trim off right to the corner. And then on the other side you've got to leave a little bit, an eighth of an inch onto the wall. So then you can overlap the other paper onto that. So it's just a matter of trimming that off now, wiping the paste off. And then either the offcut, which usually that's what you use, you use your offcut, plumb a line and you put the offcut back to the trim and then you're on with your next piece. Do that all right. And where the paper overlaps using the overlap adhesive, just go up the edge. Wipe it back. It's crucial to make sure you don't get paste on the front of this paper. Now that's looking all good that. There you go, that's corner done. Looks a little better. I mean you just can't even doesn't stand out now. Doesn't stand out. Right. I'll show you this next piece going on and um, going round these screws. When it comes to your next piece, open it up again, slightly fold it and don't stick it fully on the wall and don't stick it right up to the line of your next piece, just a little bit away. Make sure you've got the overlap at the top. If it was a pattern paper, we'd be checking the pattern to make sure that's right. But because this is just a free match, I can just make sure the line, the, the joint is butt up. Don't overlap it. You can check that with your finger. And then once you're satisfied with it buttoned up, you can push the air out from the back. Checking your joints, you can push it back into position if it's. That's not too bad. 
And then I've just got to trim this top. And then I'll show you around the bottom. Making sure you're on your line coming down, and then where the screw is, you literally just bang it, just like that, it pops through the paper. Making sure there's nowhere trapped down the table. We can check the joints. And then I've just got to trim that off at the bottom and just cut a little bit of paper off there. Don't I? Quick look at that so far. So above the door there, I've just put that piece in. So I've got a strip down here to put in. I'm going to splice it across there. And over here, because I decided to put this other piece on from that, the plumb line was different. So instead of starting from here, I'm working back, I've come that way. So I've got a piece to put on down here first. Then across the top there, I'm going to put another piece on, um, which is going to overlap to this side. And then I'm going to splice it down to that corner and it'll wrap straight round underneath. That piece is in there now. So all I've got to do is trim it off just here. Now you can see I've got I've overlapped it. Now sometimes you can go straight across, but sometimes I like to go slightly diagonal because you can't see it as much. Just go and tie it off. There we go. There's a faint line there, but that'll dry off. You wouldn't see that. But once that's emulsion, that's fine. You just wipe it down. There you go. That's spliced in now. It's all looking good. Finish across that top to this side here, just slightly overlap it, plumb a line, piece on, splice it, finish off, round the corner. Next wall is this window wall, um, it's a bit of a ceiling to it there that I'm going to paper as well. I mean sometimes you've got a choice, you can have that white under there and just finish the paper to the edge. But this was papered all the way to the window, so I'm going to finish it as it was. Um, so my first length, I'm actually going to measure from the window here and leave a bit of overlap and come round. So I'm going to plumb a line down here and then work off that back to the window and then work back to the conduit round the conduit, down that wall and then I'm going to work straight underneath coming round and splice it in on the corner. First piece on. Now this next bit here 
what I'm going to do, because I know that is nice and plumb, I'm going to work off the next piece to there and then measure from up there round under the window and then I'm going to put that piece on and then with this I'm actually going to put a full piece on round and then splice that in to the instead of splicing it in there it just comes straight down so it's a nice full piece there you go that's that done spliced in so I'm doing well it's important to keep the same distance on your paper because when you're going across the wall you've got to join up at the other side um, and hopefully if you keep them perfectly plumb by the time you get to the other side they meet up that's not worked out too bad for me um, if that was a finished paper I'd do it completely different I'd work it out differently but what I'm going to do now is measure from here, my width of my paper, plumb a line, and then I'm going to put another piece on, full length, so it comes round to the window, and then I'm going to actually allow it to flow over that one, and then splice them, top and bottom, and that'll be okay now. When it comes to the fireplace wall, all depends on what wallpaper you're using. Because there's no pattern to this, it generally doesn't matter where I start in the room. But if you have a decent pattern, you'd want to start on your fireplace wall so the pattern flows around the room. Um, there's different ways you can set it out. But generally, you don't want to be leaving yourself with a small piece of paper running up the side or anywhere. So you try and work out it being even, but at the same time, not leaving yourself with little pieces. Um, with this one, just have a look around this car. more of a diagonal to it, you can end up 
cutting off the bit that you need underneath. So you've got to make sure that you cut. In fact, I'm going to put a line on that so I know where to cut and pull it off a bit. You've got to make sure your line is cut very neat. So that's the bit I'm on about where if you're not careful you can end up cutting some of this off like you actually need. Now what you've got to do is where all the corners are, make relief cuts first of all. So the paper actually moves into the corners. about just taking your turn. Trim that off and then stick it back just to show you. That's how soft the paper gets. The paper, the pencil even can cut it sometimes. Looking down my ear, I can feel you. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. And then always wipe your paste off. Good preparation on your filling makes for good edges on your paper. Right, so I've just got to finish that side off. And uh, that's it. I'll show you a little bit on the arch. Sorry, on the space going through. Um, and then the finish. Ready to do round this bit now. And what I'm going to do, they're never easy to paper round. <clears throat> You've got to finish your edge somewhere. So. I'm going to put a length on, coming down, and then when it goes round there, I'm going to make sure it just lips round this edge, just by an eighth of an inch. 
and then paper onto it. So, the same with going across the top there. I'll be able to splice one in down the side and then wrap it under and then just have it going round the edge again, eighth of an inch. There you go, two pieces up. I'll just show you around the corner. So like I say, a little bit of an overlap that way. And you've got a little bit of an overlap around here. So when these pieces come on, you can put a pencil line down and then cut it, and it should just be neat enough. So, next piece on here, splice it in, fold it round, a little bit of an edge on the other side, take it across, and bring down that side. Doing really well. That opening is uh, papered. Just got the other side to do now. So, just plumbed a line down there, so I'm going to put my first length on. And like I say, let's get the line right. Um, I'll come around just eighth of an inch. I'm going to overlap the paper, mark it with a pencil, and then cut it off neat. The reason I'm not going to use a blade is because I can, I've got a chance of cutting into this paper and the paper is like tissue and so it's better just using my scissors. That's how you do it. I've marked it with a pencil down the edge and then you trim it off. And once that's had some emulsion on it, you won't really see that at all. Looking good. Right, just a few more walls left and then I'll show you the finish. All finished, apart from that wall there, which is a bit of a pain. But on with the painting now. Just give you a quick look around there. 